Angelo, I am so excited to have you on the podcast because, you know, I, I, I try to teach my audience about protein, about aminos, the importance of, but it helps to have a guest on that can talk the talk and get really deep into this topic. So I'm super excited for our conversation today. Thanks, Amy. I'm excited to be here too. And I love, I love talking protein and amino acids to anyone who will listen. So well, they're vital, right? And we're going to teach the audience today why they are so vital for all things from weight to hair, to muscle, to energy, all the things that my audience is struggling with. So this is perfect. Perfect. So let's start the conversation by just diving into your story a little bit. I know you have come from, you, you do come from a background where your parents, and you're very lucky, by the way, your parents did not feed you donuts and Pop-Tarts. You came from a very healthy family, sport-oriented family. And if I'm wrong, correct me, but your mom was giving you amino acids at a very young age, correct? Yeah, it's like the first supplement I really remember her giving me. I mean, they gave me a lot of vitamins and supplements as a kid. But yeah, I mean, they had a natural health food store and my dad had been in the supplement business and they had a natural health food restaurant. So they were very focused on whole food nutrition and supplements where they could be useful and helpful. So yeah, I was I was exposed to a pretty, I, I, I think I must have been like three or four. I remember her like giving it to me and and you know, like a good mom, probably like, can you feel it, Angie? And I'd be like, <laughs> and I think I really could. I mean, now I still can. It's it's, an, it's one of the reasons why, again, you know, I think I believe so much in, in protein and amino acids because you can feel so quickly afterwards, you can actually feel it. You can feel how much better you feel, how much more energy you have and, um, and just overall your vitality. Yeah, no doubt you can. We'll get into my experience here in a little bit, but I want to lay the groundwork for people to understand what we're talking about. So when we are talking about aminos, the stuff that your mom gave you at a very young age, can you break it down and get into what are they? What are amino acids? Let's start there and we'll kind of compare that to protein and get into why they're important too. Okay. It's an interesting frame, you know, comparing it to protein because I would almost say protein is really the place to start because that's that's the... That's the thing that more people are familiar with. Okay. Um, and so, you know, I think in general, people are familiar with there's like three main macronutrients, whether or, whether or not they know those are the words. There's fats, there's carbohydrates, and there's protein. And the protein that we eat is actually really closely related to the protein that's in our body. And that, that's really the big difference uh, between protein and the other two macronutrients. We eat fats and we eat carbohydrates primarily to be burned as fuel we convert them into like a native fuel source in our body called ATP. So we can like stand up so we can move around and even honestly, just so we can breathe. So our brain can function, et cetera. Protein can be used for that, but it's really not, it's, it's not, it's like primary use case. The reason why we eat protein is because our body's made up of protein and we have to rebuild it. That's the simplest way of describing it. So um, our bodies Many people are familiar that, you know, we're over 50% water. Well, of the part that's solid mass, the part that's not water, more than half of that is made up of proteins. And that includes things obvious like our muscle, um, but it's also things like all of our organs, our kidneys, our heart, our liver, it's our skin, it's our eyes, it's even things that go as far as uh, enzymes and hormones and our neurotransmitters, which are the metabolites of protein. So it's like protein is just, it's a lot of what we are actually made of. And in our bodies, the way that protein functions is that it is in a state of constant turnover. And I think people, you know, again, I've heard kind of like pop culture references to like, you're not the same cells you were when you were born, like your cells are kind of constantly being remade. Well, your proteins are constantly being remade. The protein that makes up some skin tissue um, or that makes up um, an enzyme is in a state of turnover. It's actually going to break down. And then it's going to try to rebuild itself. And in the shortest way of explaining it, it's to basically like refresh it, to, to supply the body with new, fresher, better proteins. Well, when that protein breaks apart inside your body, what it does is it breaks down into all the little constituent parts that make it up, which are amino acids. Amino acids are the building blocks of these proteins. And when a protein breaks down in our body, which is again, a very natural process, into those unique amino acids, it can't reuse all of them. Some of them are no longer good in the simplest terms. And so what we do is we convert them into urea and we pee them out. That's 
again, kind of the simplest way of describing it. Well, um, as you can imagine, like we have to rebuild those proteins. You can't just like not rebuild your skin tissue. You can't just not rebuild your heart. Um, so that's why we eat proteins. When we eat protein in our diet, we digest it, we break it down into these unique individual amino acids, and then those amino acids go into our blood and they help rebuild all the proteins in our body. So that's kind of like, I think just fundamental basic biology that's helpful for everyone to be aware of, of why protein and thus amino acids are so important. So when we're talking about, you said something interesting about breaking down muscles. So most people know when you work out, you're breaking down that muscle tissue and then that has to be rebuilt. Without amino acids, without protein, what happens? Do we essentially catabolize ourselves? Do we eat away at our own muscle tissue in order to get the protein that we need to get the amino acids we need? Great question. Yes. And the, the simple answer is your muscle is actually the one type of protein in your body that you can spare. So your muscle is not only the thing that, you know, ties together all your, your bones so that you can actually move through space, uh, but it's also the, what we might call the reserve of amino acids for the rest of your body. It's like your savings account. So whenever you go for an extended period, and this is what might shock people, I'm not talking an extended period like days. I'm talking like more than a few hours without eating protein or amino acids, your body will decide to start breaking down muscle tissue in order to supply amino acids to the blood so that your heart can have what it needs so that your other major organs can have what they need. Now, it's not the kind of thing to freak out about like, ah, oh, if I don't eat protein or amino acids every few hours, I'm gonna lose all my muscle. Uh, but it is something to be aware of and to think about. And particularly as we age, when it becomes more difficult to maintain muscle and it becomes more difficult to build muscle, you know, I think the idea of fasting or going for an extended period without protein or without free form essential amino acids, you are, um, you're going to, you're making it harder to maintain and to build muscle. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. See, I love it when guests say something that I've said all along and I didn't even pay them to say it. Like we didn't collaborate <laughs> on this. Right. So for, well, just you, science, it's just science, right? Yeah. It's basic science. <laughs> but I love the fact that you said, so this is what I have always said. Your muscles are the storage depot of amino acids and protein. So when you're, and, and I make it more for the ladies out there who are eating 50 and 60 grams of protein a day. And they're like, I'm eating a ton of protein. It's like, no, you're not. No, you're not. Your body will break down your muscle tissue. That muscle that gives you shape, that muscle that protects your bones, that muscle that makes you more metabolically active to burn the fat that you're struggling to get off your body you're reducing your protein intake, not eating enough amino acids, you're burning your, your furnace. You're literally getting rid of the very thing that gives you a metabolism. So I'm so happy that you said it in that way. And only to, I mean, uh, strengthen what you're saying right now, when you eat protein or you eat amino acids itself, because what they do is they stimulate the development of these new proteins. It helps you build new muscle. That is very, uh, uh, metabolically intensive. It, you burn a lot of calories. So simply eating more protein also helps you burn more calories. Like eating protein or taking amino acids over carbohydrates or um, other calorically dense things like fats will actually help you burn more calories itself. So it's a self-fulfilling set of behaviors. If you ensure that you eat enough protein and take enough amino acids, it's going to actually make you burn more calories simply in the act of doing it. And it's going to help you maintain and build more muscle, which is then going to make it easier to burn fat. And I think something that people really don't realize when they just focus on the scale, particularly around weight loss, is when you deprive yourself of calories, you're not just depriving yourself of calories, you're depriving yourself or some kind of caloric restriction. If you're, if you're restricting protein as well, you're, going to, you're absolutely going to lose muscle when you're losing that fat. And you can lose a pound of muscle with a 750 calorie deficit, whereas it takes a 3,500 calorie deficit to lose a pound of fat. So lots of times when you go on some kind of really strict, super caloric restrictive diet for a short amount of time, you're losing a bunch of muscle and some fat. And then when you go back to poor behaviors, you end up putting back on fat, but you don't just like put the muscle back on. You have to eat protein. You need to do exercise. It's something you need to um, invest in on a more regular basis. And it'll actually give you the body that you're looking for versus these kind of, you know, 
I think more short time frame things that you think I'm just going to, you know, it's going to happen right away, um, you know, overnight. And you, you can actually really jeopardize your long term results from doing that. That is great. 700 calorie deficit. So, ladies, 750. We all and, and, it, and it depends. I mean, it depends on what you're eating, right? But if, yeah. if you deprive yourself, yes. But still, that's not a lot. And how many, I can't even tell you how many of my listeners out there are calorically restricting themselves because they're in that desperation mode of wanting to lose weight or they're on the, what I lovingly call the Beverly Hills soccer mom drug of choice for weight loss, the Ozempic, the Manjaro. They're on those that it's killing their appetite. They're lucky if they're taking in 700 calories a day. And literally, I mean, that's one of the things that I talk about on here and that we're seeing is that muscle loss. So if you guys are on any of those Beverly Hills weight loss, soccer mom drug of choice, you need to be taking your aminos. You need to eat protein and take aminos like it's your second job, period. Or you're going to end up fatter at the end because all your muscle is going to be gone. Yeah, I think uh, in short, if you're going to calorically restrict Protein and amino acids are the most important thing you need to be focusing on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and obviously like micronutrients, like the, the vitamins you're getting from, from like, from, from good vegetables, et cetera. But if you are, um, you really need to make sure it's, you're not getting the calories from like carbs and fat and things like that. You need to be focusing on getting it from, from protein if, if you're restricting that degree. Well, and can you get into, since you're on the topic, I'm going to kind of springboard. We need protein. That is essential we actually don't need carbohydrates. We could go our entire lives without carbs. We need fats. We need, we need the omegas and all of that for the lipid layer of all of our cells, but we would literally die without protein or just shrivel up and be a ball of, of string basically with no muscle. It's true. Uh, and that's why they're called essential amino acids. So to be precise, uh, we need protein. And, you know, if you're not, if you're not supplementing, then when you eat protein, what you're trying to get out of the protein is the essential amino acids. There's 20 amino acids and it's similar to fats. Not all fats are essential, but there's certain fats that are essential. So you need to eat foods that are, that are dense in them. When you eat protein, there are 20 amino acids, nine are essential, 11 are non-essential. Now, it's not that you necessarily want to force your body to produce all the non-essential ones, but the big idea is your body can't make the essential ones. You have to eat them. It can synthesize the non-essential ones from the essential ones. But the, but the other really big, important, I think, thing that gets overlooked in this is that the essential amino acids are not just the ones your body can't make. They're also the active component of the protein. The essential amino acids are the part of the protein that stimulate the new protein synthesis. We've done studies where there's essential amino acids, essential amino acids plus non-essential amino acids, or only the non-essential amino acids. And it's clear that the essential amino acids alone do all of the protein synthesis. The non-essential amino acids play no role. Okay. So they get used as a, like a building block to actually build proteins in the end, but you don't, you, you don't need them. So Yes, if you you literally can't survive. They did some really interesting studies too a while back with the um, people that were um, like hunger striking in, in Ireland and they were measuring their amino acid levels in their blood. And the people were actually fine until they literally ran out of muscle. There was no more muscle to break down to supply the amino acids to the blood and then that's when they died. So it's like they were fine with the actual caloric, I mean, they weren't fine with the caloric deprivation, but they could keep living and all their organs could keep functioning. But once there was no amino acids left to break down from the muscular tissue, then they died. Wow. That's insane. Well, yeah, that tells you how important it is. So we've talked about the importance of amino acids with weights, definitely with muscle, which kind of ties into weight, ties into longevity. What about hair? A lot of my listeners are experiencing hair thinning and hair loss. How important are amino acids for our hair quality? Very important. And this is maybe a good time to bring up one of the, the idea of a recommended daily allowance. So when, there, when there's something like the recommended daily allowance for protein intake in America, which is approximately 0.4 grams of protein per pound of body weight. So if you weighed um, 100 pounds for, for simple math, um, that would mean 40 grams of protein. Uh, if you weighed 150 pounds, that would be like 60 grams of protein. 
That is the bare minimum of protein, really. It's not like recommended for vitality. That's the bare minimum you need to not have hair loss issues, to not have major skin issues. And the reason for that is you have to have these amino acids in order to maintain healthy skin, to maintain healthy hair, et cetera. So they're clearly directly tied to that. And when you increase that protein intake and you don't tax your body in that way, it directly leads to, I mean, there's other, there's other types of hormonal impacts, et cetera, but it's a key ingredient, a fundamental ingredient for having healthy hair and, and healthy skin. Yeah, so ladies, take note because all y'all are out there eating two little grams of protein. It's not enough protein. And, and maybe this is, a, this is a good time to bring up, really, I think it's maybe not the perfect metric for everyone, but it's a good thing to aim for for everyone. And it's just to think a gram of protein per pound of body weight. So over double what that, what I would say is like the minimum daily allowance, not the recommended daily allowance. That is a, that is a healthy, sustainable amount of protein that will ensure that you have vibrant muscles, good body composition, healthy hair, healthy skin, et cetera. Now, if someone wants to lose weight, you know, let's say, I'll just give you an example. Let's say a woman is 180, but her fighting weight, her happy weight is 140. Should she eat 180 or should she eat 140 grams of protein? So there's not a perfect answer to this, but I think a lot of the general guidance is a gram of protein per ideal body weight. So it'd be for the 140. That said, if she goes all the way up to the 180 grams of protein and removes carbs to make up for that because the 40 grams of protein are going to equal um you know approximately 100 another 160 calories yeah and if she removes those carbs and replaces them with protein that protein is going to be more metabolically efficient. She's going to lose that much more weight and going all the way up to 180 grams of protein is still very healthy and within the accepted range of a, of a very sustainable amount of protein. So you would get more benefit from going all the way up to the 180. If you're, if you are removing you know, the same amount of carbs in order to, to stay within a caloric restriction, because you have, you do have to take in less calories than you burn to lose fat. But right. what you want to do is you want to increase the protein to ensure that you don't lose muscle when you do it. And if you increase the protein because it's more, because it increases your metabolism um, and it takes energy to burn that protein, to break down that protein, it's going to be better than the carbs for a fat loss goal specifically. And then as we start to get over the age of 40, which a large majority of my listeners are perimenopause, menopause, it becomes even more important, right? Yeah. So overall, this is both for men and women. As we age, our ability to break down protein uh, decreases in, 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 uh, in its effectiveness. Also, our ability to, be, to basically stimulate the new protein synthesis decreases as well. So we simply don't get the same bang for the buck out of the protein that we used to get. For women, it's exacerbated even more by the hormonal changes in perimenopause. And thus, for someone who is not yet menopausal, but say they're 40 years old, it is going to be, well, so actually, here's an important uh, comparison. If you're in your 20s and you take a gram of essential amino acids in, a, in an ideal formula, it's going to have a, about twice the impact of protein synthesis as a gram of very quality protein. Okay. That's because the essential amino acids are in double their quantity and they're the active thing in the protein that you're taking anyways. So a gram of essential amino acids is worth twice as much as a gram of protein in terms of protein synthesis. But as you age, once you get to 40, your ability to break down the protein is diminished. And the fact that it takes longer for that for those amino acids from the protein to get into your blood, suddenly now the essential amino acids are three times as effective as the protein. At age 50, it's four and it keeps going up. And by the time they've done studies on women in their mid 60s, a gram of essential amino acids is six times more powerful than a gram of protein, whey protein, a very high quality animal protein for stimulating muscle protein synthesis. So I think the, the importance of realizing that actually even the efficacy of the protein itself is it's not as efficacious as it was when you were younger combined with the hormonal changes of menopause. It's like, you really need to be focusing on your protein intake and I think the, the notion of using a supplement like key on aminos to help hit those higher levels and honestly get more bang for your buck out of the fact that it's so much more concentrated and it's ideally formulated, you're going to get more protein synthesis from it and help overcome 
some of that anabolic resistance, the ability to stimulate new proteins that comes from both aging and from the hormonal changes of menopause. So if we have a woman or a man, I'll, I'll get the men in here too, but if we have, <laughs> if we have a person, well, we that, don't have to, <laughs> I mean, all right. So we'll stick with the ladies. Cause I hear this mostly from the ladies, right? Guys can eat, guys will eat meat all day long and they'll take whatever supplement you give them. You're like, here, take that. And they're like, all right. Mm -hmm. But ladies, their appetites start to decrease as they get older. Mm -hmm. And then I start to hear the, well, it's too hard to get in the protein. Could they essentially take Keon aminos and let's say they're getting 80 grams of protein. I'm being generous, 80 grams of protein mm -hmm. from animal sources, from the steak, from the burger, from the chicken, from the fish, all of that. Can they then take Keon aminos and kind of bridge the gap where they're not quite hitting that 120, 140 that they should be, but the aminos are coming in and essentially giving them the benefits of eating a ribeye and eating 12 eggs or whatever their protein source would be. The short answer is yes. And you can do it with a lot less Keon aminos or essential amino acids than you would need to eat of the meat. Not only is it lighter because it's like a fruit flavored drink, <laughs> but it's literally less, it's literally less quantity, right? It's less grams of total things you have to intake. So that's a short answer. Slightly more nuanced answers just to name though. I would not recommend that you replace your recommended daily allowance. Right. And it's not a, because it's not a pure comparison because the steak has other minerals in it. It has some of the non-essential amino acids. Eggs have other good fats in them. There are other good things in whole foods. So you don't want to be like replacing all of your whole foods with, with supplements. But I think this, I think this, I think the solution you gave is perfect. So long as, you know, they're, if, for example, if they're 150 pounds, getting 80 grams of whole food protein in, so that's good. And again, if you can bridge the gap back up to, say, um, even all the way up to that 150 with half that amount or even a third of that amount in essential amino acids, it's much easier to get it in. But um, again, I think you want to make sure you get in a good solid base of real whole food protein that has good fats and has good minerals. Um, but it is, it can be really hard for people. I think just what you're saying for sometimes for women who like the appetite's not there and it's like, man, that feels like a lot of meat <laughs> or that's like a lot of Greek yogurt, um, you know, which I think is oftentimes a way that people turn to protein powders mm -hmm. and protein powders fundamentally are a supplement as well. You know, I mean, they're, they're an isolated form of something to help you hit these higher goals. And when you compare, you know, say Keon aminos to a protein powder, it is a lot more efficient and effective and a lot better bang for your buck. Um, again, not to replace the meals that you eat, but to help supplement and get, get to those higher levels. Right. Absolutely. And that's actually, that's how I use mine because when you're busy, and let's be honest, sometimes even if my appetite is there, I don't have the time to get in the meals. I'm not intentionally fasting, but I'm just in meetings all day, doing recordings all day with patients all day. I will drink Keon Aminos because I'm addicted to the mango. I told you that I am addicted yeah. to the mango flavor. I know all <laughs> y'all might like the watermelon and the, uh, and the lemon lime. But total addiction to mango. So I just keep putting it in my water bottle. Like I have some in here right now, just drinking it all day long. And I will get in my protein in whole food sources or maybe a protein shake and then the whole food sources too. But what I found is this keeps me going all day long. So I feel like I'm preserving my muscle. You know, I just did a hard workout this morning in the gym. I'm now feeding those muscles. So I'll drink the aminos during my workout and then I'll drink them all day long. And I feel like that's helping me to actually preserve a, and put on muscle, even at the age of 49, I have better muscle comp now, body comp and muscle structure now than I did when I was competing in my twenties. So that's kind of how I use it. You can tell me if I'm doing it right or wrong. I think it's, that's I think it's a I, that's a great protocol. I mean, there's lots of different ways that people use it. And I think that's an excellent protocol that is, um, it's achieving all the things that you just said. You got it all right. Yeah. Well, I figure yeah. if I do it during a workout, I heard, I think it was Milo Sarchev. It was one of the old school bodybuilders from back in the day. And I heard him say, why aren't you drinking your aminos during your workout? Because that's when you're breaking down your muscle tissue. So have them on board, have them instead of a 
pre-workout, have your aminos in there and let your body suck up those amino acids as you're breaking down the muscle tissue. And then you can add them on through the day as well. It, it is a perfect solution. I mean, the science actually says that <laughs> it's, it's hard to like not make it sound. It's like a miracle supplement, but it, it it really is so fundamental to, to fitness. Taking amino, taking essential amino acids before you work out significantly increase the muscle protein synthesis from the workout. So literally, it, you will get more from your workout. You'll get, you'll get a much more efficient workout. It also helps reduce fatigue because it helps you from breaking down as as much muscle. Um, so this it's going to help with recovery. It's going to help with your your muscle fatigue and your endurance while you're while you're doing it. Um, and then it's all it can be great to take while you're working out, and also great when you take it after. So it's like not saying someone you need to take it before, during, and after, but it absolutely makes sense in every single one of those cases. And it flavors your water, so that way you get in more water through the day, and you're getting the benefits of the aminos too at the same time. That's how I look. And at you know, it. we've never, you know, again, not to make it seem like too much of a miracle supplement, and so we haven't marketed in this way. But there's also very interesting and um, very clear science that shows that amino acids have an incredible hydrating effect. So when the, the reason why people put glucose in water, like Gatorade, um, and historically have done that in these drinks or whatever other brands, is because it helps the water. Uh, pass through the small intestine. So it actually does improve the hydrating capacity of the water. Amino acids actually do the same thing. So amino acids can be as effective, if not more effective than glucose, but you don't get like a sh blood sugar spike from it. And you also support your muscles. So literally the aminos, taking the aminos in water, make it, sorry, not to get too science, but hypotonic relative to, <laughs> to, the, to the water in your blood. And thus it makes it more effective at hydrating you than water alone. So not only are you supporting your muscle, you're actually, it's, it's a better hydration beverage than water. Bonus. That's just another bonus. bonus. It's yeah. Another bonus. To make you feel better about drinking it all day. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I love it. I want to talk about it in relationship to injury and recovery and repair because I have a personal story, two personal stories. So I started using Keon back, it was before my surgery in June, June or July. And I knew I had to get aminos on board. So it was perfect timing. Started that continued it through surgery after surgery. My doctor was amazed at how fast I healed. In fact, when I went to get the stitches out, they're like, these are kind of embedded in your skin. I'm like, yeah, it's because I've been doing aminos and literally like I am quick healing right now. Like I am healing over the stitches that they had to then dig out. And it just amazes me. I mean, it's basically like Wolverine healing. And again, I know we can't say it's, you know, this, type of miracle, but it kind of is. I want you to get into the study that you told me about, about the bedridden patients and how it protected their muscles and how can we incorporate aminos into healing of all, of any injury. I mean, it could be that you just, you know, tore something, or it could be that you had surgery and were opened up. So I think one of the big misconceptions with, um, how muscle is built is that people think that you have to, you must do resistance training, like you must lift weights to break down the muscle tissue, then have it rebuild. Um, that is like the most ideal way to stimulate muscle growth. But actually, protein, the essential amino acids with, within protein to be more precise, have their own anabolic effect. They actually stimulate new growth of proteins. You don't, you literally don't have to have physical activity. So the example of that are these studies that they did for NASA around 20 years ago now, because they were trying to figure out, you've got astronauts going into space for many months and no resistance, right? They're just floating in space. So the fear is, uh, if there's no resistance, then their muscles are just going to waste away. What could we do from a nutritional protocol to avoid this? So they did a study where they had people um, in the U.S. and complete bed rest for 28 days. So you're just lying in a bed, bedpan not moving for 28 days. In addition to a diet, they gave them um, essential amino acids. So basically would be the equivalent of three servings of Keon aminos six times a day. So it's a lot, right? <laughs> but in doing that, in, in taking that for over 28 days, there was no net muscle loss. There was actually slight net muscle gain. And anyone who's getting injured before and bedridden, I mean, I, I can remember when I was uh, 16, I got injured in my knee and I was just like bedridden for a week and all the muscle in my leg just like went away. Um, 
it's kind of hard to imagine, but you truly can overcome this incredible catabolic muscle breakdown and breakdown effect that typically comes from being bedridden or having some kind of in injury purely from a nutritional protocol, which is essential amino acids. They are the thing that will ensure that you continue to build new proteins. So, you know, that in that case, the situation is more about just not doing anything, which is one of the things that happens when we get injured or we have a surgery is we can't move. But the other thing that happens when we get injured or we have a surgery, which I think is um, somewhat tied to kind of some of the impacts that happen in menopause, is that we undergo these different types of hormonal impacts and our body goes into a stress response. And we go into a stress response, our body is not thinking, oh, I want to build up muscle. Oh, I want to maintain muscle. It's in a more kind of panicky state. And it actually, it, does, it doesn't prioritize building muscle and allows more muscle to break down. And so it's in those periods that not only due to the bed rest, but because your body's actually undergoing this stress from injury, from surgery, um, from you know, other types of causes that you really want to look at and consider taking a supplement like Keon Aminos to help overcome those catabolic effects of the stress itself. And so, yeah, there's, I mean, there's a lot of studies out there where they do, um, you actually did like an ideal protocol where you start taking the Keon Aminos before you're going to go, before you're going to have the surgery. Um, cause it actually starts to, um, help build up the muscle more beforehand and then immediately after and in that recovery period, it helps to help rebuild all the tissues, you know, more, more quickly in, um, just way faster than if you hadn't had that kind of intervention. Right. And preserve your muscle in the meantime. Too, and yeah. You know? It preserves yeah. the muscle and helps build the new tissue around, you know, perhaps wherever you had, like if you had an incision or wherever the specific injury was, we actually, um, I can't give specifics around this, but there's a very famous, very important NBA basketball player that was injured towards the end of last year. And, um, it was, it was crucial, basically, that this person was able to recover quickly. And uh, we put him on a super, on a, a more high dose thing like that. And it rapidly increased his improvement after an important surgery that he had. So he could get back to playing. So is there a max dose or are we safe doing it kind of all day long? I think generally you're safe doing it all day long. I mean, in the case that I gave earlier, like NASA, people are taking... Right. Um, 18 servings a day um, with no observable side effects for 30 days doing that. I mean, personally, someone, you know, our team, we're pretty big essential amino acid fans here in the office and people take, you know, many servings per day. I don't think anyone's taking like 20 servings a day. And we're also people that are thinking about, you know, eating good whole food meals and eating protein. Um, but there's, there's really no um, observable upper limit that starts to have some kind of, you know, negative effect on you. Yeah, and this, this is going slightly out of the scope of what we're talking about, but I, th I think it's a helpful, um, again, again, another kind of extreme example, like the NASA example was, we didn't formulate our product for this purpose. We formulated it based off the studies that were more around maintaining muscle, building muscle, overall health, but more and more of the research around essential amino acids is actually going into supporting people with kidney disease. Uh, and that is because when you have some kind of kidney disease, you're body basically, it can't take, it, what happens is when we eat protein, we, we use the essential amino acids, but there's a bunch of leftover non-essential amino acids. And then we have to process all those. And that's what becomes taxing on the kidneys. And so if you take essential amino acids instead of that, what happens for someone who's in this kind of clinical situation is their body prioritizes using the essential amino acids and some of the non-essential amino acids that have broken down from their muscle tissue. And it basically resolves these kidney issues. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't solve it. It doesn't cure their kidney disease, but they don't have the repercussions that someone would from having like whole food protein. So I guess it's just another example of kind of how um, non-offensive the essential amino acids are to our body. We use them all. It's not like they're, um, uh, when we're eating sometimes whole food things, there's, there's stuff that we can't use all of it. And so our body just kind of processes it out and, and gets rid of it. And sometimes can be taxing on our organs. Whereas with the essential amino acids, our body wants it all. Okay. No, that totally makes sense. And that, that mm -hmm. is springboarding me into another question I have for you. I heard you talk about this on another podcast. I think it's really important to bring up because I didn't even know it. So coming from my background in bodybuilding and all the fitness stuff I've done, you know, back in the day, this is 20 years ago, we were taking in branch chain amino acids. 
Now, I heard you say something very interesting about BCAAs, that they can actually do more harm than good. And I think a lot of people are confused, and I've even heard this from my patients in the past. Uh, well, I take BCAAs. Aren't, is, isn't that fine? Aren't, isn't that enough amino acids? And I, I don't know. I didn't know. I did not know the information that you gave about BCAAs potentially doing more harm than good as compared to amino acids. Yeah, I mean, the short answer is BCAAs are a waste of money and they can potentially be harmful. And that's not necessarily, but they can be harmful. So, and this is not to say BCAAs as a category is bad. It's them in isolation. Right. BCAA stands for branched chain amino acids. And it's actually three of the nine essential amino acids. So it's not like I'm saying they're they're bad in general. It's in something like Keon aminos. It's in an essential amino acid formula. But what we have observed over the last 20 years through multiple studies is that you have to consume all nine essential amino acids at the same time. And you want them to enter the blood at the same time so that they become available to the body. The reason for that is because you cannot stimulate this protein synthesis without all nine. So if you put a bunch, uh, it uh, it's tough. I'm, I'm trying to find the right example here. I don't know how much your audience is like familiar with like say football, but generally if you're not even familiar with football, you just see like there's a bunch of guys on the field. Imagine if you only put three in, right? But they're like your three best players, right? It's not going to go well. <laughs> you need the full team in. And so what happens when you only put those three in is it's definitely not anabolic. It definitely doesn't promote protein synthesis. And in fact, what can happen is it, it raises their levels in the blood and it kind of confuses the body. And so the body thinks it needs to break down muscle tissue to help even out the amount of amino acids in the blood so that it's more, it's more even. So it's definitely, um, it's, I would just, I would just avoid them. Now there, there can be some, if you're like a, if you're a very serious performance athlete or you're a very dedicated specific type of, um, vegan nutrition expert, <laughs> there could be a situation in which you're trying to um, enhance the amino acid profile of a generally like l poor quality protein diet, like the proteins and so like if you're only eating vegan proteins and plant based proteins, they're simply not as high in in the BCAAs, like maybe if you're taking those with some of those plant protein meals, but I would just say like for the broad for most of us, um, it's just not worth your time, not worth your money. And the risk of negatively impacting yourself is, it's just not worth it. it it's way better to choose whole food proteins. And if you're going to supplement, take essential amino acids, which offer all of the purported benefits of what we thought BCAAs alone did, and so much more, actually. I just find that fascinating. That That piece of info was key for me when I heard it, because how often, I mean, I, like I said, I didn't even know I would easily switch back and forth between, oh, this time I'll get BCAAs and this time I'll get the essentials. And I didn't know. You really don't know until you have someone like yourself on a podcast, educating people about this. And then that's a, that's hugely impactful information right there. Now you had mentioned cortisol earlier. So I kind of want to circle back to the stress response of the body and, and being under stress and how aminos can help with that. Because, you know, I mean, listen, if, if we just look at the last couple of years, we can say that pretty much everyone is under stress, but sp specifically when you have a health condition, when you're dealing with low hormone function or a thyroid problem and, and you're dealing with that, that health stressor, in addition to all the other life stressors that you're trying to deal with too, it can really have an impact on your adrenals. Your cortisol can go crazy. Your blood sugar starts to go crazy. Where do amino acids fit into this? Where essential amino acids fit into this is to basically help overcome the anabolic resistance. It, it's, the anabolic resistance being your body doesn't want to digest proteins the way it normally does. And, it, and it's not using the amino acids to the degree that it normally would because it's busy doing other things. That's the simplest way of saying it. So I think when you're in these types of stressful situations, probably a, a really ideal way of thinking about it is, okay, how can I eat really protein nutrient de dense meals? And between those meals, like let's say three meals a day, between those meals, take one to three servings of essential amino acids in addition to that. And what that will do is it'll make sure that you're adding one to two additional kind of spikes in protein synthesis in your body throughout the day. 
and ensuring that you're maintaining and building muscle and helping overcome that. Another thing you could do is if you find yourself eating meals that are lower in protein, like I don't, maybe it's like, ah, I'm just like not that hungry and you're just eating a salad and it's like, you don't even like want the protein on it. Take essential amino acids with that meal it, because you just, you need to be that much more focused on um, getting in those essential amino acids. And the simple fact is when you take a free form supplement, because it's formulated with these enhanced amounts of, of certain amino acids, the leucine, isoleucine, valine, lysine, and because it's immediately available to your blood and you don't have to digest it, it just overcomes that. It doesn't, it doesn't have to deal with um, the prohibition that the protein goes through. Well, and I think anyone that has been through a stressful time, if, if you pay attention to your body at all, you can actually see yourself kind of shrinking. It's almost like your muscles go flat. You start to catabolize because and you get kind of soft. You get like you, soft. Sh you shrink, you shrink, you shrink and like your belly, like you get, yeah. you just get kind of soft and weak. Yeah. You shrink and you grow. Yeah. You get squishy yeah. and it's just <laughs> yeah, like, you get squishy, not, yeah. and, and, and you're, you're sitting there thinking like, Oh my gosh, I'm not even eating. I'm all wigged down. I'm stressed out. You're running on adrenaline. And this is where I'm going to tie in my story. Number two of, of injury plus, plus saving my body during a stressful time. So this last week, I mean, we almost had to reschedule because I had a family member decide to blow out a knee and tear quad tendon from the kneecap. So here I am all stressed out in the hospital for a couple of days, you know, eating hospital food. But by God, I had my, my key on aminos with me because I'm addicted to them, right? So that is the one thing that I took with me. I took a couple supplements with me. I took that with me. And I was doing that in my water all through the day, like I said. So this is not my repair story. This is this is a, a family member's repair story that now I'm feeding him aminos out the wazoo to repair. But but the stress affected you too. Oh even if even God. if it wasn't you that went under underwent the, the surgery, it's like you're stressed out, you're not sleeping normal, you're in this hospital, you're eating bad food. Yep. A hundred percent. Which is 100%. like, I mean, which is like the story. I feel like that's like the story of knowing my wife, like the story of like a mom yeah. <laughs> over, is, over 18 I mean, years. Yeah. yeah I mean, you know, you're still, you're running a business. You're dealing with, you know, putting out fires in the business and you're in the hospital and you're like rescheduling yeah. everything. So I thought for sure, I'm like, I'm going to be a ball of goo when I get back home and get back into my routine. And do you know, I had the best damn arm workout this morning. I had my veins popping. I was like, yeah, I'm back. <laughs> So now in talking to you, it's kind of actually, I didn't think about it this morning, but now it's kind of coming all together. The aminos saved me. They literally saved me through that stressful time. Yeah. So thank you. That's an awesome story. I, I mean, one more interesting story from someone here in our office. This is a pretty fit guy, um, but not as much like a, like a muscle bodybuilder type guy. He wanted to lose like 20 pounds to get like, he wanted to get a six pack basically, but he's had a shoulder injury. And so he's been like, man, I, you know, it's like, I should be doing weight training, but also trying to do this diet thing. He's like, you know, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to restrict calories, but really count my macros be super smart. And I'm going to up my aminos content. I'm going to be taking like my key on aminos just like religiously. He got a body scan at the beginning. And after like two months, he loses 25 pounds. He sees a six pack and he gets the new body scan and he has lost no muscle. And he did not do any resistance training during that period because he was trying to rest his, 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 his shoulder. And for anyone like, it almost sounds like, I think for like people who haven't used essential amino acids before, they're like, uh, it's not possible if you cut calories like that, you know, you have to be doing this other training, you're going to lose muscle. Like he didn't lose any muscle. I mean, he's, he did the body scans at the beginning, during and after, and he didn't. So it's, it's another, and I, I just relate that to your story where it's like, maybe you can't be in the gym for a few days, you're undergoing the stress and like, you don't, you don't have to lose the gains that you've made. Right. Exactly. You know, I, I always say if I was stranded on a desert Island and someone said, you can only have one supplement with you. I, I think I'm changing it up. I think it might be, it might, it might be aminos because <laughs> They do so much. And I, I just find this conversation so enlightening because I'm learning and talking to you about all the different benefits outside the ones I knew. Now I'm learning even more, more benefits. They just keep stacking upon each other. I think and we've, we've actually only covered like a small portion of it because when you start to learn about really how amino acids, the role that they play with our neurotransmitter 
our neurotransmitters, which are our mood. I mean, our serotonin and dopamine, and norepinephrine, these are, these are the things that help construct our daily mood every day. When you realize, wow, they're the metabolites of these amino acids. Like it's literally, you know, not feeding ourselves well with these is not just, a, it's not just affecting what we look like. It's going to affect directly what we feel like as well. And again, hormones, I mean, these are proteins made up of amino acids. So it's like, it, it's, it's so much of who we are that, um, it just it couldn't be more fundamental and i'm there with you like if i had to choose one supplement for a desert island it would be it would be essential amino acids yeah absolutely so mood too now that's interesting so we have to touch on that before i let you go because many of my listeners as well struggle with depression and anxiety and sometimes it's you know i, I talk about the thyroid and hormones in relation to depression and anxiety and they'll go to their doctor and they'll get a band-aid antidepressant when it really has nothing to do with brain chemistry but it could even come down to a lack of essential amino acids, those building blocks, like you said, for the neurotransmitters. Yeah, I think when we start to talk about the brain and mood and neurotransmitters, there, there are a lot of variables. There's a lot of things going on and, and uh, brains can be wired in different ways and there's lots of different chemical reactions going on. In short though, proper essential amino acid nutrition through sufficient amount of daily protein and or through supplementation of essential amino acids is a fundamental piece that must be addressed if you are struggling with some type of mental health issues like this. I think it, similarly, it's like exercise. You also need to really look at exercise. But if you're not if you're not getting in sufficient essential amino acids, you're not really exercising and or moving your body in some kind of way, and you're struggling with depression or something else like that, you've got to address those. And in many cases, I think if you address those you can find the issue start to resolve. There may be other things going on as well, but it's it's got to be, it's like a base that if you don't look at that first, you could be wasting your time looking at a bunch of other kind of um, less important variables potentially. Right. Yeah. You know, one really good example of it actually is just to show you how much our brain chemistry can change. So one of the reasons why people take aminos um, and they can feel a difference, and this is very common with athletes, is that um, leucine, one of them, and tryptophan, another one, actually kind of operate on a similar pathway. And what happens is when we exercise, we oxidize that leucine. We basically burn the leucine um, because we don't burn the leucine. The leucine is a facilitator for our cells and our muscles to, to, in the, at the mitochondrial level to actually make new ATP. So we utilize a lot of leucine in order to actually just um, – to convert glucose into energy. So what happens is in our blood, the leucine goes down because we're using so much of it, more of it than we normally would. And when that happens, relative to the tryptophan, the tryptophan increases. And as anyone's heard kind of the cliche of like having too much turkey at right. you know, Thanksgiving, tryptophan will make you sleepy. It really does. So when the tryptophan levels increase in your blood relative to the leucine, and you're working with a blood brain barrier, so the amino acids actually pass through into your brain through the blood. You end up having more tryptophan in your brain than you normally would. And what does tryptophan turn into? It turns into serotonin. And what does serotonin do? It makes you feel sleepy and tired. And ultimately, serotonin is what turns into melatonin, which is you know, very well known as like a hormone that helps you to regulate sleep. Yep. So that's one reason also why, especially for endurance athletes, it's really important to supplement with essential amino acids while you're racing or running because you don't just get tired with your body. Your brain actually gets tired because your, your, your mood shifts as the amino acid levels change in your brain. Just, just an example of like how, you know, how, how important these amino acids are for affecting our mood, our focus, how alert we are, et cetera. I mean, at this point, I'm kind of, why wouldn't you add these in? I mean, honestly, everyone listening, why aren't you taking essential aminos? I mean, really, because they do so much. I mean, this has just been fascinating, fascinating. And I'm convinced that this will be in my protocol every single day. Well, multiple times a day because I love the taste. <laughs> <laughs> I love the taste too. I'm a big mango fan. I'm a lime fan too, but it's crazy. Some people swear by the berry and swear by the watermelon. So I think it's, it's finding what works for you. Well, yeah, well, I have a husband on the berry and the watermelon, so he's digging mm -hmm. those and there you go. Yeah. I'm, I'm keeping the mango <laughs> to myself. So Angela, this has been amazing. So I, do you have any closing comments, something that we didn't, anything that we didn't go over that you wanted to tell the listeners 
Um, besides just really for me, take these every day, people, honestly, why aren't you? I think the message I'd end with is, uh, keep it simple for yourself. You know, like so many times in these kinds of conversations, or you listen to an interview like this, you get all this information and maybe it starts to feel like complicated, like there's a lot going on. And really, if there's just one simple takeaway I'd give you is essential amino acids really are key for all these different parts of your life, but it doesn't have to be complicated. Like you have to be, you know, I have to make sure I eat all this protein and do this. Like take one simple step, like try Keon aminos, make it the first thing you do in the morning. Just have a scoop in water and you've already you've kind of like kickstarted your day in a smart way that's going to help you make healthier decisions the rest of the day with protein, with essential amino acids, with other parts of your diet. It doesn't have to feel like uh, some complicated thing where you're like, well, how much do I take and when do I take it? Like just try taking it first thing in the morning and see how you feel different. Yeah. And I, I promise you'll start to see the changes. Yeah, you really will. Honestly, you really will. From from muscles to, to even hair, skin, everything, you absolutely will. And you are giving my listeners 20% off, which is amazing. That will, that will go so far. Everyone should try it. So we'll put this in the show notes as well. But if you go to getkeon.com, that's G-E-T-K-I-O-N.com backslash thyroid, T-H-Y-R-O-I-D, you will get 20% off your order. So thank you for doing that. That's amazing for my listeners. Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Amy. Well, Angelo. This information has been incredible. We will definitely have you back on the show. We'll deep dive into all the different things. Like you said, we just scratched the surface. But these really are the did. big topics that that my people need to hear from the muscle to the energy to the hair. It's been perfect. So thank you for your time today. Thank you so much.